Hi everyone, this is Ashley Latecki Ellenboss with Sky House Herb School and Apothecary. And I just want to thank you all for subscribing to my channel or my podcast, however you're watching or listening to this. It means a lot to me know, to know that people are out there listening and that they are finding this content helpful. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I'm excited to announce that next year I'll be creating content twice a week. Right now, I'm only creating content once a week. That's just what I have available. Um, and starting next year, I'll start putting out two sessions or two episodes per week. And I'm really excited to do that, to share more in the kitchen work with you all, and also just facts and interesting things about plants. So today's talk is herbs and pregnancy. This is a big topic. Uh, if you're listening to this, either you might be pregnant, you might be thinking about getting pregnant or trying to get pregnant. So hopefully this content will be helpful for you in navigating how to use herbs and even more importantly, how to think about herbs during pregnancy. Now, I want to say, first of all, that if you are pregnant, congratulations, of course, <laughs> but also um, if you're pregnant, it means that things are going well, right? Our bodies are very intelligently designed. And so to become pregnant, usually a lot of things, both biochemically and hormonally, um, with our nervous system, a lot of things have to be in alignment in order for the body to take a pregnancy. So I say this because I think a lot of women, when they get pregnant, they get a little bit freaked out, like, okay, well now what do I have to do? And the answer is you don't have to do anything. Um, you just have to be as relaxed and open as possible. Feed yourself good foods if you can stomach it, because I know first trimester you can get a little bit <laughs> nauseous. So, uh, but really, really in that first trimester, you just want to trust your body and try to relax. That's my best advice, because in that first trimester, there's really not a lot that we can do. Um, in, in terms of keeping, you know, trying to maintain a pregnancy, if it's meant to be maintained, it will be maintained. And if it's not, then it's not. And, you know, there are some things we can do, but there's no guarantees. And so because it's such a delicate time in a woman's um, in a pregnancy, that first trimester, when really the groundwork is being laid out, it's really a nice time to take as much out, <laughs> you know, like, uh, you know, take things that are unhealthy out of your diet, right? It's a good time to limit activity and just take good care of yourself. And it's not a great time to be adding in a bunch of, of herbs. Um, now in terms of vitamins and supplements, yes, there are absolutely recommendations that your doctor or midwife or doula will tell you about, including folic acid, vitamin D, uh, iron, if you're showing any signs of anemia. Um, but beyond that, really as much as you can, just try to relax and trust the process. Um, the second thing I wanted to say is that, you know, I mean, my approach with herbs in pregnancy throughout all of pregnancy is really to nourish first. So really what I think is most helpful for women during pregnancy with herbs is to stay nourished and using herbs that are gonna build up the body's reserves of minerals and vitamins and healthy compounds that are going to aid in a full recovery after childbirth, maybe help with milk production after childbirth and to help prevent things like hemorrhaging um, and to shorten labor, which is uh, <laughs> for someone who had a 52 hour labor, a short labor, my second one was I think like 10 hours way better. So, you know, shorter labors um, in general uh, are just a little bit more, um, it, you know, you can endure them a little bit better. And, you know, my, my doula always said, uh, you know, uh, strong contractions mean babies coming faster, which means shorter labor. So, so those are the things that we can do with herbs to help support things. In the first trimester, we really want to focus on foods. So think about what are the foods that are going to be most nourishing to you? A lot of women find that soups can be really easy to digest. Um, sometimes for me in my pregnancy, I craved yogurt and fruit. So my first trimester, I pretty much lived on berries and fruit or berries and yogurt. 
Um, so you just have to find what works, what your body wants. Um, but, you know, nourishing or soups would be really helpful. I think, uh, also just making sure that you're eating whole foods, organic when possible. If you can't eat, then try smoothies and adding some greens into your smoothies, just to make sure that you're getting all the minerals and nutrients that you need. The third thing I want to say is that there, one of the issues with herbs in pregnancy that probably some of you have run into is that there's not a lot of clinical data, which basically means that a lot of herbs are considered to be likely unsafe or possibly unsafe. And the reason for that is because they just don't have the medical data available because think about it, how many pregnant women are willing to try herbs during pregnancy to see if they, if they harm their baby, right? Like that's not a huge pool of people teaming up, lining up to go through those tests, right? So uh, a lot of information that I go on is both chemical and traditional. So what I like to look at is, has this herb been used traditionally in pregnant women for how long and for what reasons? And then I can look at the chemistry of the plant and say, okay, are there any compounds that are known to cause fetal damage that are blood moving or um, mineralogic or um, you know, induce blood flow, uh, possibly causing a, um, a miscarriage, right? So are they amenagogue herbs? So we, so I look at all of that and, um, you know, also I look to some of my teachers, Rosemary Gladstar, Margie Flint, um, and other herbalists, like, you know, those who have a long history of using herbs during pregnancy for their clients and in their own bodies. So that's how I put together the information. And I do want to say that, of course, anything that I say in this recording, um, in this episode, you know, really, this is information, but it's up to you to really decide what you feel most comfortable with for your body, what feels safe to you. And, uh, you know, if you have any medical underlying medical conditions to speak with your doctor or your clinical herbalist that you're working with to ask them if these herbs are right for you. Okay, so let's dive into the plants now. So I'm going to tell you two of my top favorite plants. Now, these are sort of general tonics that can be taken throughout pregnancy. And then I'll tell you about specific herbs for common complaints during pregnancy. So my top two herbs for pregnancy are nettles, and red raspberry leaf. So the first one we're gonna talk about is nettles. Now, if you've listened to my podcast before, you know that I love nettles. Nettles is probably one of my favorite herbs of all time. Um, this plant, um, we use the leaves here. So although you can buy the roots and the seeds in commerce, that is not what we're talking about today for use in pregnancy. You need to have the leaves. And this plant, the Latin name is Urtica dioica. However, there are different species that are native to different areas. I know there's a Australandia in Australia. There is a native nettles to Hawaii. So you can ask your local herbalist and see, um, you know, if the if they're um, their type of nettle was, was also used traditionally. Um, I'm talking about Urtica dioica, which is the European and the American nettles. So nettles is great because it is basically like your multivitamin. It has calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, iron, copper. It has vitamins a, C, D, and vitamin K, which is really helpful for clotting. And this is something that can help prevent hemorrhaging and miscarriage down the road. So it is a nice one to have in your body because of all of those nutrients. And again, remember my number one recommendation is nourish, nourish, nourish. And nettles is probably the most nourishing tonic out there. Um, I also really love to recommend nettles because it has a long historical use in pregnancy. You know, hundreds, thousand years ago, uh, we see this being used as a tonic. Um, at least for the last two centuries, we have a lot of traditional writings on using this herb safely in pregnancy. So uh, it's also in the um, in the medical they have categories for how safe herbs are, are during pregnancy. And this one is called under the category of likely safe. 
So it's considered to be one of the most safe herbs if you are to use herbs in pregnancy. Uh, it is helpful for leg cramps because it has high amounts of calcium and magnesium. So if that's something for your, that you're suffering with, it'll be very helpful there. Also, it's high in iron. It, well, it's actually, it has iron, but what it does is it helps your body utilize iron more. And iron is basically part of your red blood cells. And when you are pregnant, your red blood cell count goes way up because you're basically building a new human inside of you, which requires a lot of blood a lot of blood flow and a lot of iron, a lot of blood. So you do need to make sure that your iron reserves are high. Um, so by taking something like nettles, maybe along with a supplement like Floridix, Floridix is a natural um, plant-based iron supplement that I often recommend to my clients who have signs of low iron. Um, this is something I would recommend that you speak with your doctor about just because, you know, if you do take too much, it can be constipating. So you do want to make sure that you're keeping your dose moderated. So nettles can be really helpful though, because it doesn't, it has trace amounts of iron, but what it helps you do is utilize the iron from the foods you're eating, like beets and, um, let's see what else. A lot of, uh, meats have, and beans have iron in them. Uh, leafy greens like kale and collards have iron. So you can also increase your, uh, your ability to hold that iron and put that into action into building your baby <laughs> by taking an herb like nettles. Um, nettles also uh, reduces the risk of hemorrhages and hemorrhoids, as I mentioned, and that's due to its amount of vitamin K, which is a nice uh, helper for clotting. Now, Rosemary Gladstar, who is a well-beloved herbalist, um, in her book, Herbal Healing for Women, this is not that book, um, but this is her, one another book that has some great recipes in it. Um, she talks about how helpful nettles are for preventing fatigue during pregnancy. So how many women wake up, especially during that first, maybe beginning of second trimester, just exhausted. Like you're at the end of your day, all you want to do is sleep. You know, you just want to nap <laughs> in the middle of the day. So drinking nettles, this is something that it has really high in chlorophyll. So it will boost your energy without caffeine. And this is something that I would recommend if you are pregnant to try to come off of caffeine and increase your, your drinking of something like nettles to give you that natural energy without taxing the liver and draining the adrenals, which you're gonna need for the marathon of pregnancy. The second herb is red raspberry leaf and that I have right here. It's very, very fluffy. So it's just, it's a very, very fluffy, soft, pillowy plant. And uh, this herb, and again, we're not talking about the berry, just the leaf. This herb is also in that category, likely safe. So that is good to know that it has that designation. It is also has a very, very long traditional use. So you can find it in a lot of your folk herbal books, um, a lot of stories of women using it. I use both nettles and red raspberry leaf in both of my pregnancies. Um, I use nettles more. I should have used more red raspberry leaf because it can help shorten labor. So uh, if I ever do that again, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> two is enough. Um, but if I were to, I would definitely be drinking my red raspberry leaf, especially in that third trimester to prepare the uterine muscles. Um, because there, there was a study that was done in Sydney, Australia, um, where they took women and they, um, they measured their, the length of their labors. And there was like a 30% decrease in the length of labors in women who were taking red raspberry leaf prior to uh, delivery. And so I think it was like maybe six to eight weeks before they delivered. And so they had stronger contractions and shorter labors, which is exactly what you want. So next time <laughs> for you, maybe um, you might want to consider taking red raspberry leaf. It's also a tonic herb. So it's high in vitamin C and E and A. It also has vitamin K in it. Um, it has B complex vitamins, iron, calcium, and magnesium. So again, you know, a lot of herbal teas for pregnancy actually combine these two herbs because they cover a lot of ground in terms of supporting pregnancy. Uh, red raspberry leaf also helps to prevent pregnancy, helps to prevent miscarriage um, because it's very toning to the uterus. So it helps the uterus hold what it has in it until it's time to squeeze and move it out. 
It's said to decrease morning sickness, reduces pain and length of labor, uh, may prevent preeclampsia and preterm labor. So that's a really interesting thing too. So again, think about just sort of like the plant wisdom, helping your body know how long to hold the pregnancy and then how to most effectively birth the baby. It also, um, both nettles and red raspberry leaf also both help to increase milk production after birth. So that's also really, really helpful because as soon as the baby's born, we wanna be able to help that baby to latch and to nurse right away and to try to you know, have as good of a milk supply as is possible for us. And that, that might be another talk that I can do at another time is about nursing and herbs for nursing mothers. So how do we use these two herbs? I would recommend that in the first trimester, maybe you just use something like nettles and do a lower dose. Again, first trimester, it's you just really want to take it easy and light. So I would say maybe a quarter a cup to half a cup of dried nettle leaves per four cups of water or per quart jar or quart of water. And so you would just take those quarter cup of herbs, put it at the bottom, pour hot water over top, cap it, let it sit overnight, ideally. Um, if not, then four to six hours is okay. And then strain it and drink half of that each day. Okay, and then put it in the refrigerator, warm it up if you want, or you can keep it cold and drink the other half the next day. So you're drinking, it's, it's a lower amount and you're, you're diluting it down. And so just play with the amount, what feels right in your body, a quarter cup, a half a cup of the herbs. You know, do you want even less than that? Do you want to drink maybe just one cup a day, right? So just feel in, you know, it's, it's amazing when you're pregnant how your intuition of what your body needs becomes really heightened. So you wanna also really trust that and start to build that trust with you and your baby really early on. So then when you come into your second trimester, um, you know, this is um, after week, what is it, 14, then you start, then you can start adding in your red, your, um, not red clover, your red raspberry leaf, <laughs> not red clover, you don't want to take red clover in pregnancy, but your red raspberry leaf, you can start adding that in right into the nettles that you've been taking. So continue with whatever dose you were doing and maybe add about four tablespoons. It's really, really fluffy and you don't need a lot. So maybe four tablespoons of your red raspberry leaf, add that into that quart jar. And then again, drink maybe one to two cups a day. Um, and I might then start to increase your nettles. So at the second trimester, I might add in maybe another quarter cup. So if you were at a quarter cup, go up to half a cup. If you're at half a cup, go up to a full cup and then drink that throughout your pregnancy. You can also towards the end, the last six to eight weeks, you can add a few more tablespoons of the red raspberry leaf into there. Now I will say the red raspberry leaf does have a little bit of a tannic flavor. So it's a little stringent and drying on the tongue. So you might find that adding a little bit of cinnamon powder will sweeten it and warm it up a little bit and might add a little bit of nice flavor that you want, okay? Now let's talk about herbs for other issues that come up in pregnancy. Now, again, I'm really gonna talk very basic safe herbs. There are specific herbs that can be used for spotting, for cramping, um, for things like uh, preeclampsia. I'm not gonna talk about those because really you do need to see a clinical herbalist to go over your health history. So these are just general herbs. So, so the biggest thing I remember from my pregnancy, my first one especially was nausea just everything made me want to throw up. Um, I was up, you know, I had an upset stomach all the time. I just could barely eat anything. So there are safe herbs that you can take for nausea in that first trimester and early second trimester. I mean, you could take them actually the whole time, but usually morning sickness, which doesn't always happen in the morning, uh, usually that subsides around the second to third trimester. So my favorite ones for this are peppermint and uh, ginger. Both of these are safe. They're considered likely safe during pregnancy. You do wanna be mindful of the dose um, because in high, high, high doses, they can <clears throat> um, bring on bleeding. And again, that's super, I mean, you'd have to really go crazy with both of these herbs. So I'm just talking about, you know, like a cup of tea that you would make for yourself, something that's pleasant tasting. So maybe one or two teaspoons of the dried peppermint leaf, or, um, you know, maybe a one slice of fresh ginger root boiled in some water, right? And just make yourself a tea 
and then sip on that, just sip on it. And if warmth makes you more nauseous, add it to ice. So you can ice those teas to sip on too. Sometimes drinking through a straw can be helpful if drinking with your lips makes you nauseous. There's all these weird things, but try, you can try that. Try drinking with a straw, see if that helps. Because it is really important that you stay hydrated, especially in that first trimester. And if you're having any emetic things like you're throwing up a lot, you wanna make sure that you're also getting fluids in. Um, other herbs that can be really safe and helpful during pregnancy are some nervines like chamomile and lemon balm. These are wonderful herbs that can help ease anxiety, that can help with sleep and restlessness. So if you're finding that pregnancy is making you anxious, part of it is just hormonal, right? And it's like, whoa, if this is your first pregnancy, it's also like, oh my goodness, what is happening? What is going to happen? How is my life going to be different? Right. And like, is, can my body do this? Right. There's a lot of anxieties that can come up. Um, and so using very gentle nervines like chamomile and lemon balm can just take that edge off and can connect you with plants that have a very mothering and nurturing type of energy to them. So you can try that. They're also both good for gas and bloating. So if you feel, you know, gas and bloating at all, um, then you can try drinking those teas too. Uh, another thing that's really common in pregnancy, especially in the first trimester, is that you get a cold. So that's a bummer because you're already maybe nauseous and exhausted, and now you've got this like head cold and cough or whatever. So to try to prevent that, um, rose hips is a very safe, high source uh, of vitamin C, and it's a gentle immune booster. So you do want during that first trimester, especially because what happens is your immune system gets down-regulated during pregnancy because your body, you're basically that little baby that's growing um, could be seen as a foreign invader. And so your body has basically taken your, your immune system and sh not shut it down, but really turned the intensity of your immune system and your immune reactivity down so that your body doesn't accidentally think that the baby is something that needs to be taken care of, right? So because of that lowered immunity, you know, drinking um, teas like hibiscus and rosehip tea, taking rosehip supplements that can be really good for increasing vitamin C, washing your hands a little bit more than you might be used to, trying to get a little more sleep than you might have needed to before you got pregnant. All of those things can really help keep your immune system strong. And if you do get sick, I remember I got the worst cold. I mean, I was stuffed up. I could barely breathe. I was coughing all night and steams were one of the best things that helped me. So I would just take a bunch of my kitchen herbs like thyme, oregano, sage, eucalyptus, put in a few drops of, um, of tea tree or no, it was eucalyptus oil. I would slice up some garlic and ginger and put it in a big bowl, pour boiling water over it, and then put a towel over my head and just let that steam into my face and let things try to drain out. And I remember being up at like two and three in the morning, like sometimes twice a night, because I couldn't take, a, you know, there's not a lot of medications that you can take that are considered to be really safe during pregnancy, things that are going to be decongestants and things that are um, antispasmodics, like cough suppressants. So, you know, doing those steams can be really helpful. Um, using herbal compresses on your chest, like a mustard compress, those things might be helpful if you find you have uh, those symptoms. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know what you think. Again, I think most important is that trust your body. Your body is wise. Your body is strong. Your body is capable. Your mind is going to follow and get right on board. And so we just have to really create an environment, both externally and internally, that's conducive to building, to creating. Um, so nourish, nourish, nourish yourself and try to find all the foods and all the books and all the things that really feed your soul at a deep level. And then that is gonna really feed and nourish your baby as well. So please let me know if there's questions, if you have any herbal favorites or teas that you really enjoyed during pregnancy. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.